Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels. And we're here in the studio today with Sam Schmidt and Brandy Kirka from um, Driven Neuro Recovery Center. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast here in the studio on Thursdays, and you can catch this live on Facebook, live on YouTube, or on YouTube afterwards. It gets pushed out through our newsletter. You'll be able to find us on Roku and pretty much every multimedia channel that's out there. We like to bring in uh, movers and shakers and those that are doing amazing things in the healthcare space here in Las Vegas, whether that's through medical education, medical travel, or doing things like treating populations that are uh, dealing with paralysis, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Welcome to the studio, Sam and Brandy. Welcome to uh, Inside Medicine. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, so we're going to dive in, but before we start talking about Driven, we really want to get to know you, Sam. You've got a heck of a story. You're very well recognized out there, and you're, from what I hear, the hardest working guy on the circuit. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about your, 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 your background, because uh, you've got a hell of a story to share. Well, that's, uh, you know, I think driven is a uh, culmination of 19 years of paralysis and seeing what's happened in the medical industry with insurance and everything else. And so uh, that's why we were uh, pleased to finally be able to bring it to the Las Vegas community because uh, I've been living here now for, you know, 24 years and, uh, and you know, basically call it my hometown now. So, but uh, to your point, um, I grew up a racer, um, didn't do baseball, basketball, football, I started racing at five, uh, which is that picture, uh, on a little Honda 50. Well, you didn't and, start in cars, uh, you started on motorcycles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, didn't even, I didn't even have a bicycle. I went straight to that. You know, I think we all had that Honda 50. Yeah. That was like the most popular motorcycle out there. And, and I don't even remember, did it have gears or was it just a straight throttle? Uh, it did not have a clutch, but it did have gears. Okay. Just, just up and down. So, which I had it back now, you know, but uh, <laughs> good times. And then uh, my dad raced and, and uh, it just... You know, great family sport. We just every weekend we were we were racing. So and you're from Nebraska originally, right? Nebraska originally, and then my dad got a, a job opportunity in California when I was mm-hmm. really young. So we we migrated there, and uh, he raced off road. Um, you know, like the Mint 400 and oh, right you know, races yeah. that stuff, and and I raced motocross. So um, I grew up in that industry, and uh, my hero was Rick Mears, and uh, uh, from Bakersfield, California, won 4500s, raced for Roger Penske. Uh, that's quarter midget. That was the next step in the in the in the phase to glory. So, what was in the uh, back of that? Just a standard five eight horsepower yeah, motor. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And went roundy round. And uh, um, you know, we 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 put everything into our racing. You know, and that's that's all we did to live it and dream it. And so, you know, it's from a very young age, just completely focused on the Indy five hundred. Uh, that's where I wanted to go. That's what I wanted to do. And was very fortunate. Uh, 97, 98, 99 to uh, race Indy cars, um, you know, reach the ultimate uh, of the sport. 99 was your year. 99 <laughs> was my year. Uh, the Elvis chops were, were good luck. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, September here, we uh, we won the, sat on the pole and won the race here at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Um, uh, interesting point, got the got the beautiful trophy from, uh, uh, from the Mayor Goodman, and that was when he was elected to his first term. I rem- uh, you know, so. I remember all the media coverage from yeah. that. I've been in town since 93, yeah. and just this was a big, was a big deal. deal. It was fun, fun stuff. So uh, that was riding, riding high, man. I had a you know, beautiful wife of seven years, a uh, two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, six-month-year-old son, right you know, when, when that picture was taken. Yep. But, uh, you know, four months later, I'm down in Florida. I'm testing. Life is good. Going to run the 2000 season, going to fight for the championship. And uh, bam, you know, back in the wall, 200 miles an hour. Oh. Blew apart C3, C4. Um, I'm not knocked unconscious, not breathing for, I said, five minutes. Uh, airlifted me to the trauma center in uh, Florida. And that doctor, uh, you know, neurosurgeons and their egos. Uh, yep. So he was really lucky to make it through the night. And uh, if he makes it the first week, just find him a nursing home. He'll be on a ventilator for what will be a very short life. So um, luckily, my parents uh, didn't. And my wife, you know, and, and just all of their friends and family did not, uh, you know, take that diagnosis. I started calling facilities around the country that deal with spinal cord injury and uh, activity-dependent programs, trying to find out what's going on, what can we do. And there was one doctor, uh, Dr. John McDonald in St. Louis, that said, I think we can get him off the ventilator. I think we can, we can make progress. And all the other ones were like, oh, man, 
He's on a ventilator. We can teach you to live with it, but that's all we can do. Mm. So they liked his positive attitude and his hope. Uh, so they had me airlifted there. And I got me off that a ventilator uh, like six weeks later. So wow. Uh, it just it just goes to show you can't you can't always uh, trust that first opinion. Yep. And uh, and uh, you can work uh, through a lot of those uh, negative diagnoses. You know, it's uh, uh, I think a lot of times it's conservative given the industry, given insurance, for whatever reason. Uh, they're very conservative in their approach, and and if you don't like what you hear, get get another opinion. You know, um, so that was a key lesson for me, and uh, because I had this uh, um, situation and, uh, you know, great family, great uh, um, community, um, everything else. And the motorsports community was just blaring, like, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? So we started the Sam Schmidt Paralysis Foundation uh, as a means to uh, try and solve the problem. Yep. And uh, uh, kind of piggybacked off of the motorsports community and the fans and all their support. So... Uh, that's been going on for you know 18 years, mm-hmm. and we've had just tremendous success. Uh, At what point did you move back to Las Vegas? So I, I was actually here um, uh, when I became a professional driver in 1995. Yep. Uh, I made the decision to move here because I was in California and on the road 250 days a year and paying the taxes. That didn't make sense. Of course. Uh, and the, you know, flights and LAX and all that. So well, my wife and I and the kids moved uh, here in 1995, and, uh, you know, because of the professional driver situation, um, just decided to be based here. Richie Hearn was here. Yeah. Um, you know, Jimmy Vassar was here, a few other people. So, um, I was here before I was paralyzed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank God, because when we came back here in 2000, uh, after being an inpatient in St. Louis, I have, I have found over time, this is by far the most accessible city in the world. Uh, because of the tourism, because of... You know, that's so great uh, to hear. It's, yeah. uh, well, we have to be. You got to think about it. The last 15 years, uh, the city was rebuilt almost, yeah. and uh, a lot of it, and uh, it's flat, and it's got great temperature, and, you know, nonstop lights anywhere, and just there's a whole list of reasons that this is very wheelchair-friendly, so... That's good, and that's good. So... <laughs> We want to dive a little bit into driven. Well, we don't want to dive Absolutely. a little bit. We want to totally dive into driven. It is a cutting edge neuro recovery center built in downtown Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Brandy is overseeing a lot of that initiative. What made you choose downtown? And let's talk a little bit about driven. I, we really want to understand uh, the drive behind it. Uh, and yeah. what it's going to do for the community here and everything that you have planned for it. I, I really want to have, you know, Brandy talk about the facility and everything we're doing. But the main reason for it is simply that 30 years ago, you have this injury, you do a year in inpatient rehabilitation, fully paid for. Uh, when it happened to me 19 years ago, I had to beg and plead for six months. Oh. Uh, now, if this happens to somebody, you're looking to get six weeks. And then they send you home and say, Sayonara, you're on your own. And it is uh, completely unprepared. Uh, they have got, not, not gained their independence. They're not ready to go back to work. And there's so many issues mentally, psycho, you know, psychologically, physically. And so, um, you know, that is what Driven is about, uh, to pick people up when they're sent out of the hospital prematurely, always. And uh, creative. it's almost a community for people with, you know, similar disabilities and it's, it's, it's important to emphasize it's not just spinal cord injury. Uh, we're talking MS and transverse myelitis and stroke okay. and anything that, you know, is, is paralyzing. And, yep. uh, and our, our trainers can work with them. So um, it's, uh, it's uh, to your point of having it downtown, uh, we did a lot of research. Um, and it's just so central. You know, yep. literally uh, right there behind the Canada Park, you can... I think 90% of the population get there in 25 minutes. I'm yeah. far southeast Henderson. I'm there in 25 minutes. So um, we knew we couldn't do two of them. So we wanted to be dead center. Uh, we wanted, we love the pulse of downtown. Of course. And everything that's going on. Um, live, work, feel. And our ultimate goal is to connect the dots where people come to us. They recover physically. They recover mentally. Uh, they get a place to live and they get a job. Yeah. Because that is truly what, provides the long-term solution 
is if they have a reason to get up every morning. So, And it's beautiful space. I remember when uh, Zubin, uh, Demania, took over the space. And initially we all went, what is he going to do with that building? And it Thank is God for him. spectacular. <laughs> yeah. You, you're, you, you're blessed by... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, the downfall on, of turntable. <laughs> piggybacked on some brilliant TIs. Yeah, no, that's an amazing space. So, Brandy, talk to us a little bit about the center, maybe some of the folks that work there, some of uh, the procedures, how you work with the population that you serve. Uh, yeah, so at Driven, our goal was to bring everyone together. So when people come there, they can get all the services that they need, and or at least we can guide them to where to go. So um, one of the main things is the physical side, where we have options for an intense activity-based training program. Uh, we're actually working with Next Step. They're located in California as their main branch, and they have seven others across the country. Um, but they're working with the Neuro Recovery Network, which is the Christopher Reeves Foundation. So we're we're following all the protocols for the latest research in spinal cord and neurological recovery. Um, so we are in the, also the process of being uh, partnered with them as well. Talk a little bit about the holistic approach because it's not just a physical center, as Sam said. It's really you're, you're touching on their mental, their spirituality, everything that is required in true recovery. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a lot of different options. So that was just one of them. We also have an open fitness center. So if people just want to come work out, um, everything is wheelchair accessible where the seats actually move out of the way. Um, even the cardio machines, they can pull their wheelchair right up to it, or we have the staff available to help with any kind of transfers or special setups they might need. But additionally, we have, um, downtown yoga and wellness co-op located in our building. Uh, they were originally trauma recovery yoga. Um, and they are doing a lot of classes throughout the day, um, from breathing and meditation to intense yoga classes. Um, and a lot of them are offering free services to our clients and family and caregivers to provide that mental, spiritual connection. So it sounds like you've spent a tremendous amount of time just developing these strategic partnerships. So it's, you're not doing this on your own. You've got a lot of support around you. Yeah, we, we, we know what we know, and then we want to bring in people who are experts in the other fields. So we have that, um, the downtown group uh, in there. They're also bringing in uh, massage, Reiki, which is energy healing, acupuncture, metacupping. Um, and then we also have uh, Permobile, she's a mobility specialist. Her name's Amy Minnick. She's located in there as well. And she's actually servicing our clients when they come in with any wheelchair issues or seating problems. And she's also doing um, monthly clinics where anyone can bring in their assistive technology and they will help fix it for them. That's awesome. Talk a little bit about the equipment. If we could bring up the the photo of some of the equipment there, talk a little bit about this and how this plays into the recovery process. Uh, yeah, so this is the open fitness center portion where um, these these pieces of equipment, the seats actually move out of the way so people can roll their wheelchairs right up to it. This is giving them a more independent option where they can either work on their own, they can bring their family or caregiver in to work with them, or they can work with one of our staff. But instead of transferring in and out and then switching you know, machines, it would take them hours to work out. They can just roll up to the machine and get a good workout in where most area or most gyms in the area don't have any accessible equipment or even if they do, it's one or two pieces. Here, it works as regular equipment and anyone can use it, and then it also functions for wheelchair users as well. That's uh, Tiara, which is already one of our earliest success stories that Brandy can talk about. Uh, yeah, she started with us from, from the beginning. Uh, we did a train the trainers month uh, just to make sure that everyone was familiar with the equipment and, and get our staff going. Um, so she's been with us from the start, and she actually um, has seen a lot of progress where she even went from a sip and puff wheelchair it was controlled by her mouth to a hand controlled. That's amazing just progress. In a, yeah, just in a few months, she's she's seeing a lot of progress, and we have a, a lot of other people like her where um, they're they're on crutches, and now they're able to take a few steps without using their crutches. So we're already seeing progress just in the short, short time we've been open. It has to be fulfilling to see all this come about and just the progress that's made. That's it's heartwarming on my side just to to see that. I've got a couple friends that are in chairs, and uh, I wish something like this was around back when their accidents happened. Yeah, I know. I, uh, it was a long time coming and, uh, um, I'm a little, I'm guilty of, you know, getting wrapped up in my race team and other things like that for an under period of time. But, uh, Brandy has been working for me for five years and finally said, I really want to do this. Let's, let's, let's get it done. And we traveled around. We looked at a bunch of facilities around the country, tried to take a hybrid of, uh, yeah, there's some more, uh, user stuff, but, uh, uh, take a hybrid of all of those facilities, best yeah. equipment, best practices, uh, and everything. But the one big gap was none of those facilities were providing the additional services in, uh, in-house or right there, uh, as well as just the sense of community 
uh, you know, social area that we have and uh, monthly peer group stuff and, and other things that, that uh, I was truly blessed to have, you know, a supportive wife and family who could drop everything and uh, take care of me and make sure I had the best care in the world and the best physical therapy and everything. But that's not the norm, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, there's an 85% divorce rate in this situation uh, because it's usually the guy, it's usually the breadwinner, and now it's all on the wife. She's got the kids. You know, what am I, how am I going to pay for this? I mean, it's just, it's just devastating. So these are all very real situations that have to be dealt with, and we try to, we try to do that, you know, yeah. for, for all of these type of disabilities. So it sounds like everybody that comes in has a different scenario. So you have to treat yeah. each one just a little bit more mm-hmm. different than the last. How do you do that? You know, how do you take somebody that's, um, you know, at, at a deeper state as we're somebody that's fresh and take them from, uh, you know, a, as you're talking about getting them into crutches, how does that, how does that work to advance somebody? How do you develop that individualized plan? Uh, yeah. So when we're working with the, the training specifically, when we start, people will do a two hour evaluation where it's very thorough. We go through everything from range of motion, weaknesses, strengths, what their personal goals are, what their physical goals are. And from there, we create a, a program to their specific needs. And then every six months, we'll do an evaluation to kind of re-up and see how what progress we made and then also see what goals we should work towards next. But when people come in, they are ranged from 20 years out to two months, two months out. Um, it's also just a good atmosphere to get those people together. So the people with the newer conditions are reaching out to the people with the that, that have been doing it for the long period of time and are able to kind of learn how they've done and how they've, how they've worked through problems. Um, and even so we did start a support group. Uh, we did our first one in February. We'll have another one in March and do it monthly. Um, and, and that we have people who are 35 years out from an injury and then someone who was two, two and a half months. So in that group, they're able to connect with each other and, and see what the process is and, and learn from people who are a little more experienced and over, you know, that initial shock of everything. So the rehabilitation community in Las Vegas, is it's a tight community. How do you work with the other groups? Like, how does that referral come back and forth? How do you all align? Because everybody has the mission of helping. How do you, how do you strategically align with the other groups? Yeah, and, and we are different from what any of the other services offer. So we still highly recommend anyone who comes to our place, if they can get their physical therapy, their occupational therapy, any other services, go get that as, as long as you can. When you are kicked off that and you have no insurance left and you need another option, or if you're only going you know, once or twice a week and you want to increase that program, um, come to us additionally. So we're, we're encouraging everyone to still mm-hmm. use their PT, their OT. OT. Um, but then also with PTs and OTs, uh, we're starting to connect with some different groups um, and they have a place to refer their clients over. So they don't want to just kick them out and, and not be able to provide them services because of their insurance or, or whatever other situation. You know, they want to have a place for them to go and continue their, their health and wellness for the long term. Yeah, Doug, um, it's important to stress. I mean, they should, they should love us, right? Because uh, uh, most of those entities require insurance funding or private funding or something like that. And we're fortunate that we, we have our foundation that's supporting this, this whole program. So um, if you can pay, you can pay. If you can't come, we're still going to support it. And we're going to pay for it with the foundation support. That's huge because you touched on it earlier. Insurance nowadays, it's not what we all expect it to be. Right. And people have financial challenges, especially if you are, as you again stated, the, the bread earner of the family and that income goes away. Now you're dealing with uh, bad insurance issues. Uh, I imagine it puts people into a financial desperate situation. Mm-hmm. Talk to us a little bit more about your foundation because you've had that around for some time and it's received national recognition. Tell us a little bit more about the foundation. Yeah, so we started it very early after my accident because of the motorsports community support. It was the Sam Schmidt for Alice Foundation then I think about six or seven years ago just for more of a sort of a global name recognition and identification of what we're doing. We changed it to Conquer Paralysis now, period. Uh, because that's the goal. And so uh, um, up until Driven, frankly, we had focused uh, uh, most of our available resources on uh, different forms of research um, all over the world. Uh, No brick and mortar, but like uh, doctors and research projects. And and we've had a tremendous amount of success uh, doing that, uh, but we still haven't, you know, uh, found the ultimate deal. But we've, we've now, you know, through Driven and through some other things, you've found a system that if people work hard enough, there's a lot of people walking out of the hospital 
or walking out of places like Driven that never would have done it before because the message is getting out there. You can do this through hard work. Uh, there are some drug therapies or some human control trials. And, and so we, we've been a part of that whole thing. Uh, but now with Driven, you know, frankly, this being my hometown, I've wanted to do something here. Um, so many people we talk to are like, yeah, we want to give, but we want the fun, funds to go here and be utilized here. So, <laughs> so this is your opportunity, right? I mean, uh, everything, you know, I think we operate at 15% or less, uh, you know, GNA. And uh, so 85% or 90% 90 of the dollars are going to go straight to helping people like Tara and, and other people. Uh, at this facility. So we still are going to uh, invest in what we think are reasonably pos- probable research projects around the world, probably you know half a million dollars a year, but uh, uh, a large amount of our resources will go towards driven yeah. and supporting basically client care there. So what does the horizon look like for driven? You've got this up, it's off the ground, you've had your grand opening, you're getting a lot of recognition, you're doing amazing work. Uh, what does it look like in two years, five years? It's, I think it's kind of one of those be careful what you wish for type of things because uh, when Brandy and I kind of did a business plan, did a strategy, met with the city, uh, Carol and her staff have just been amazing uh, uh, looking at facilities and offering us different things. And and uh, But we wanted, you know, so many of these people have just faced traumatic devastation and we really wanted it to be first class and uh, probably nicer than where they live. And we wanted to just embrace the community and have it be there. And so, you know, this is more expensive than something the city was offering. But um, I think we have 7,700 square feet, which we thought was tremendous, huge. Mm-hmm. But we're full. So, uh, you know. Um, good, but it's bad. Yeah. The plan was to, uh, to operate out of there for, you know, two to four years, uh, see if it goes as expected. And if so, you know, another 12, 18 months, go back to Carolyn and maybe ask for an acre. Uh, somewhere in the medical district or something, maybe two acres, because ultimately a, uh, you know, 20,000 square foot facility uh, with a pool and other opportunities for aquatic therapy and different things. Like now they, they've embraced this and said, hey, right down the street, there's um, a couple of different, you know, city pools and stuff like that. We mm-hmm. can take our clients over there and do stuff, but it's really difficult uh, to get back and forth and everything. So uh, we'd like to have a pool. We'd like to have a, a few other things we don't, can't have right now. So bottom line is, I think, yeah, we'll be doing a capital raise here in uh, 12 to 18 months and looking to build a purpose-built building because I also see the Lou Ruvo Center as just the tip of the iceberg of research facilities downtown. Yeah. And every one of those places is going to need a place to send people to do the physical therapy side of things. So maybe we can be a part of that as well. Absolutely. We're working aggressively to bring more research and development into Las Vegas. Right. And I think uh, this is something that our community needs to know more about. Uh, Las Vegas Hills is going to be hosting an event here uh, March 14th. And so it's going to be great to bring the provider community uh, down to see what you've done. Uh, and we hope that more and more support and collaborative efforts come about of that. But we spent a lot of time um, talking about this today. I've learned quite a bit myself. Is there anything that we should have covered that we did not. Uh, no, if you haven't seen it, come check it out. You know, we have that event March 14th where we're co-hosting with UMP and Select Medical is also our co-sponsor. Uh, but we have a lot of high-tech equipment there, um, one being the Geo system, which is a piece of equipment that uses robotics to help with walking. Um, it's a very advanced piece of technology, and uh, there's only two actually past the Mississippi. Uh, so come check out our, our stuff and, you know, get a tour and, and really see what we're doing there. It's, it's hard to understand when just talking about it. But once you step in there and you see what we're doing and you see our clients working hard every day, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to go into every day. That's awesome. Sam, anything to add? No, I mean, like she said, we definitely went all in. And uh, uh, that piece of equipment is very special. And, and uh, it's also important to note that uh, most of our equipment were applicable uh, we we ordered the equipment with pediatric attachments. So if somebody has a kid yeah. with cerebral palsy or MS or some other type of disorder, uh, we have the equipment that can you know help them maybe prolong uh, their disability or their permanent paralysis or something. Yeah. Thank you all for everything that you're doing in this community. It's Thanks, uh, this is big and this is uh, Las Vegas should be proud uh, to have you here and we're very thankful that you are here. 
Uh, so with that being said, we're going to wrap up the edition. Thank you all for joining us on an episode of Inside uh, Medicine, and we appreciate you being with us today. If you happen to catch the episode a little bit late, you're able to find us on our website, lasvegasheels.org, on any of our social media channels. And we look forward to the next edition of Inside Medicine. And Sam, and once again, thank you. And Brandy, thanks for coming here. And uh, we appreciate everybody willing to learn a little bit more about Driven. Have a great day.